This is going to be your guide for getting any Pokemon you want from Max Raid Battles in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah, you heard me. Gigantamax, hidden abilities, rare Pokemon, you can have it all with this method. So if it ends up helping you out, please leave a like on the video and definitely share it with all of your friends. So coming from Philly Beachy on Twitter, he's the one that posted it. His Discord is the one that discovered it. And we have the fastest way to hunt Gigantamax Pokemon in Sword and Shield. But I want to take this one a bit further because we have all of the Din locations. And now we're getting a little better with understanding how the Dins work, where to find Pokemon, Pokemon locations, and stuff like that. So let's just kind of bring it all together because personally, as a competitive Pokemon player, it's much more important for me to get hidden abilities, and you can't even take Gigantamax Pokemon onto the ranked battle stadium. So, depending on what Pokemon you're looking for, the methods are going to change. I did kind of want to make that clear in the beginning of the video, instead of just saying, this is the way of getting Gigantamax Pokemon. Nah, you can do so much more with this, but if you're still interested in getting all the Gigantamax Pokemon, I have a guide for it. Every Gigantamax location, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Check out that video if you like it. Go through my Pokemon Sword and Shield playlist. Maybe you'll find something else that you really like or really need. And let's get into it. So, same rules still apply when it comes to Dynamax Dens. That if you want a Purple Beam for rare Pokemon, you're going to need a Wishing Piece. And my video preparation has failed me. So, when you throw on the Wishing Piece, you're going to have an opportunity to reset the den. So, quickly hit the home button, and then you can see what it is. Red Beam means that's going to be from the common Pokemon spawns, and then the Purple Beam means it's going to be from the rare Pokemon spawns, and that's what you're going to need if you want a Gigantamax Pokemon, or like a fully evolved rare Pokemon, or something like that. So, if you see Red Beam, then what you want to do, just close out the game, and then keep going until you get the Pokemon that you're looking for. Otherwise, we're just going to have this, and this is going to be recommended for getting hidden abilities, because because the pre-evolution of a Pokemon can be more common on that first table, and it also can have the hidden ability, so this is going to be a way of cycling through it really quickly. But now to get into the insanity of this method. So, hit invite others, and then this is where you change your date and time. So, go to settings, all the way down, system, date and time right here. You're going to need to turn off synchronized clock via the internet, and that's going to let you manually change your time, and then just move up a day. Do that, back out go into the game, and quit. When you do this, one of the craziest things I've ever seen in any Pokemon game happens, and it refreshes it. Energy pouring from the den, you get 2,000 watts. Now, when you use a wishing piece, you don't normally get anything back, but now you can do that, and you get to see a new Pokemon. This one's five star instead of four stars, and then you can just keep cycling through it. So invite others, make sure you get to that screen, home, or not, yeah, just home, system settings, system, date and time, and it'll keep letting you do it. Now, now there's been some weird things that have happened for me with this. I've screwed it up, I've broken it, I've fixed it, I've broken it, I've made it work, I've made it not work. So, if something goes wrong, just kind of stick to the original method. I was actually making it work to where I didn't even have to invite others or ready for battle. I was just checking, changing the, the date, checking, changing the date, and it was working automatically, but then I suffered some kind of time penalty. And I feel like whenever you change the date and time and save the game or have autosave apply, then it'll actually kind of time you out. But then doing this method will untime you out from it. I want to do like a, a separate video about all of these weird things. But yeah, that's what you can do. So now you can pick the den for the Pokemon that you're looking for. And then you just keep resetting into this until you get the Pokemon that you want. While also getting crazy amounts of Watts. So yeah, you could just do this for Watt farming. That way you can buy all of the TRs you need for your competitive Pokemon. It's pretty crazy like that. Now you will need Wishing Pieces if you are going for Hidden Abilities. But if you are going for like Gigantamax Pokemon, then you just kind of keep going until you see the Gigantamax. Like I said, you can find the Gigantamax through the videos that I already have made. But now let's talk about the drawbacks. Because Pokemon games don't like it when you change your date and time. Go back to Omega Ruby now Sapphire, your secret bases, you can't do like the daily events inside secret bases, Pokemon Sun and Moon, Pokepelago doesn't like it, I think there's a few other things that get, go really bad if you try to change your date and time to manipulate it or anything like that. You can also, I think it's the uh, island scan, so you can lose out on Pokemon spawns. And in Pokemon Sword and Shield, it's kind of weird, because it kills off a lot of the natural spawning dens that happen inside the wild area, but when you do this method, it undoes that. So, I'm not really too sure. Also, any progress that you've made with your Poke jobs is going to be reset. Pretty sure the guy in Stone Inside, I haven't checked, but he does the daily deals. Pretty sure that those go away. So, you, you do kind of suffer a bit from it, and that's why I haven't made a guide, you know? 
People have been saying like, oh hey, if you change the date and time, you can force a Pokemon spawn. Well, I didn't want to do that because changing the date and time is bad for a Pokemon game. And I didn't want any of my audience or viewers to kind of suffer because they wanted to get a Mimikyu on a foggy day to set a foggy day or something. But it looks like with this, I've been able to mess up and then make it work again. So yeah, I could do it here. And that's another thing, like you can just bounce from place to place to look for the rare Pokemon you want. Just kind of go and scoop them up. If I had another wishing piece, which is easy with all those Watts, then you can just go and grab that. And now if you're looking for your favorite Pokemon or specific Gigantamax, Hidden Ability Pokemon or something like that, this is where you're going to go into Cerebi and you're going to look up the den locations. So Pokemon have two dens, one den or many dens, and that's just because of the weird way of how this works based on the rarity of the Pokemon spawns. So Common Raid is going to be a den, but then the same location rare, so Red Beam versus Purple Beam, is going to have a dis different listing of Pokemon. And once again, it kind of gets weird because people are reporting Gigantamax from Red. I think that might have something to do with just the events that are going on. That if you get the Gigantamax Butterfree, Corviknight, Dreadnought, or maybe some kind of other Force Spawn, then that means it can be inside of a Red Beam as well. I've noticed this throughout my play, but if you're targeting Pokemon and if you're using Wishing Pieces, it's going to call from the specific dens that you're looking for. And that's also where the rarity kind of gets weird. So what we can do is we can look at Den 26 and we can look at Den 59. These are the same dens. And fortunately, you know, Serebii, they do have the little pictures to kind of look what you're looking for, find the Pokemon, compare it to the dens, etc., etc. What I've noticed is that the listings on these pages aren't perfectly accurate. That if you go down to the bottom, there might be like two pictures that show. I don't really know what's up with that. I think that just might be the website not being fully updated. It's like, it could be here or it could be here from like the launch days of Pokemon Sword and Shield. But we're starting to understand it a bit more now. And what this shows is that the dens roll for the strength of the Pokemon first and then the rarity. So it's a 3, 4, 5 star den. If yes, then what Pokemon is going to be inside of it? 1 star, 35, 35, 20, 10. That's going to show the odds. It adds up. That's going to be 100%. However, once you beat the game, you don't find anything less then a three star raid. So then you're going to have to go for different tables. That means some of these Pokemon just don't appear anymore inside of that raid. And then you're going to have to be looking for other Pokemon. And then there's like the 5% rarest Pokemon in that den. This is where you find Gigantamax. This is where you find like just notoriously rare, fully evolved Pokemon and stuff like that. So if we go back here, we can see Delmize. Delmize was like a 1% fish slash 10% in Pokemon Sun and Moon. And just a really hard Pokemon to find. Also has like 1% overworld encounters on Route 9. But using this method, you have a better chance of forcing it through a max raid battle in a potentially quicker amount of time. Also, some Pokemon that have like just certain evolutionary requirements, Gigantamax Pokemon, if you're also going for hidden abilities, this is going to be the way to go. So you want to like make sure you're going for the right color of Din to match the rarity. So let's say, you know, we have Gloom, 20-35% chance, and that's going to be in the common one, but in the rare one, Gloom doesn't even appear. So don't just be like, oh, purple equals best every time. Some of the Pokemon you're looking for might be better to get depending on what you're what you're looking for. And then don't worry, like you can still find a pre-evolution Pokemon, and that hidden ability is going to ca carry over. So it has a lot to do with kind of looking for the den, looking for the Pokemon you're targeting, making sure you're getting the right one, and then just resetting until you get it. Now, hidden abilities are still very rare, but this is better than just kind of blindly going and wasting all of your watts since you do have a lot of watt farming in this method and you can just kind of keep going until you find the Pokemon that you're looking for. Now let's talk about the legality of this method because I know there's going to be a lot of idiots in the comments section that are going to go, well, Relicify, this makes you a hypocrite because you're against cheating and this is totally cheating. No, this is not cheating because you're allowed to turn your Nintendo Switch off and on. You've always been allowed to soft reset inside of Pokemon games. And you've also always been allowed to change your date and time. There are penalties for doing that, but if you're still allowed to do something inside the games without any external modification or without any unauthorized software, then it's completely fair play. And also people have been saying that if I'm okay with this being used, then that means I'm okay with RNG abuse. No, RNG abuse is expressly forbidden. It has been stated as such by the Pokemon company, and that's because you need an external program that gives you access to information you're not allowed to have. With this resetting for the dens and getting Watson stuff, you're just using the clock on your Nintendo Switch and you're turning off the game. And it's all easily accessible natural gameplay mechanics they are just kind of acting in a weird way. Now when it comes to RNG abuse, you need an external program that gives you access to information that you're not allowed to have about the games. So RNGing, that's against the rules. And then when it comes to other cheating, that's heavy game modification that's illegal and not allowed. This is not doing any of that. So until it gets patched, this is going to be completely fine to use. Just like what happened with the uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon. 
You have a Pokemon Sun and Moon, there was a Pokepelago. If you like set your clock one minute before it rolled over into another month and then you went into your games, it would kind of like make everything in the Pokepelago advance. Now this ended up being patched, but until it gets patched, we have no way of knowing if it's allowed or forbidden. So just kind of use it while you got it, and then if it gets patched, then that means it's no longer usable. But at this time, this is completely legit because it's not breaking the game. You're not cheating. You're not hard modifying anything. You're just kind of stumbling through with gameplay mechanics and getting cool things out of it. So guys, enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.